Imagine that you were recording some sensor using the microcontroller and you have some configurations like sensor biases that you change dynamically and at some point, boom, the microcontroller is disconnected from the power supply. And what is going to happen is that you would lose all the data um, of the microcontroller. So when you power on later, all the variables will hold the default values, not the data you need. And the question um, is, is there any way to solve this problem? Or in other words, is there any way to store data permanently inside of the microcontroller so you can restore that data later? The answer to this question is yes. And for that purpose, we can use the flash memory of the STM32 microcontrollers. So this video uh, will be about the flash memory in general and how to write data to the flash memory. And of course, how to get data from the flash memory. So let's get started. Before coding, um, first I have to uh, explain the general concepts so you can easily understand um, the technical terms that, uh, that we will use later. So first of all, uh, let's uh, look at, the, at this table, which is from the reference manual of the microcontroller I'm using. So this table shows the structure of the flash memory. As you see, it might have two banks and the memory unit is divided into pages. So in total, I have 512 pages and each page can hold two kilobytes of data. And these numbers might vary from one microcontroller to another. So in your case, you might get uh, different numbers. The primary purpose of the flash memory is to store instructions. So when we write code and when we compile it and debug it, what is going to happen is that our code will be translated uh, into instructions and that these instructions will be sent to the microcontroller and that these instructions will be stored inside of this flash memory unit. So the, the, as I said, the primary purpose is to store uh, the instructions that microcontroller will execute. However, if you see uh, my project and within the build analyzer, you can see that I'm using only 1.5% of the flash memory. Okay, so it's like, one two percent of the of the flash memory unit the rest 99 98 percent of the of the flash we can use it to store something else and this video is of course to explain how to uh, exploit um, this uh, memory unit to store data permanently inside of the microcontroller and another thing is that the microcontroller keeps the instructions from the top. So we never have to use uh, the, the, the pages uh, from, the, from the top. Instead, we have to use the last pages. So this thing is super important. So if we overwrite the instructions, our program will just crash. Another thing is that if we want to write something to the flash memory, first we have to erase, otherwise it is not going to work. So keeping uh, all these um, insights, uh, let's look at the code that I wrote. And to work with the flash memory unit, I created a header file so you see, and it has just a two function prototypes. One is to write data to the flash memory and the second is to read data from the flash memory. And let me open the, the source code where we have the actual Im implementation of the, of the functions. So first 
a function, as I said, is to write data to the flash memory, and it has three arguments. First is the address, like where we want to write. Second is the data pointer, and the third argument is the number of bytes we want to write. So as I said, first we have to erase a memory units before writing um, some data. And for that purpose, we can use this struct. So we have to define all the members of this struct. So our first um, argument, first member is as type erase, which in our case, at, uh, flash type erase pages, meaning that we are going to erase um, certain pages, but not the whole flash memory. The second argument is the onset page from where we want to um, erase. So uh, the input is, of course, the memory address. So what I do, I subtract flash base, uh, which is uh, this value. Then I divide by flash page size. So using this uh, trick, I can get the onset page. Then we have to define the number of pages. For that, I divide data lengths by flash page size. And these uh, symbolic names are already defined within this um, header file, basically. And then I also have to define the, the bank. So for that purpose, I just check the memory address once I define all this um, information, I have to erase the, the memory by calling this function. And once I do it, I can start writing data to the flash memory using this HAL flash program. And another thing is that when we write data to the flash memory, we, just, we don't write just a one bit, one byte per iteration. Instead, we write double word, or in other words, eight bytes of data. So um, through um, while using this while loop and using the type casting, I, I get eight bytes of data in every iteration and, and write it to the flash and memory. Uh, and also I want to point out that in, that in some microcontrollers, instead of double word, uh, you have single word. In that case, uh, instead of eight bytes, we have four bytes in every iteration. So to adapt this code to, to, to that case, you just need to change this uh, flash data type. So I define it as, as a 16-bit uh, assigned integer number. So instead, you have to write 32 and there some other minor changes, basically. Uh, then um, it could be easily adapted to that case as well. And also I forgot to mention that before using the flash, we have to unlock it. And once we finish using it, we have to lock uh, the memory unit. Uh, another important function is, of course, to, re re is to read data from the flash. And for that purpose, we have this function, which is really, really straightforward. Using the for loop, uh, I just get all the necessary data. So finally, we can test how this code works. To test uh, this code, I created this string, a step school ERK, and I'm going to write it to the flash memory uh, by, by calling this uh, function. And um, to, to be specific, I'm going to write it to the last page. Okay, that's why I have this address and uh, define it um, there and uh, just a uh, um, macro for that. So the first um, argument to this function is a flash address string. Then I have a pointer to this um, array, basically, then the, the number of uh, bytes we want to stream. Then I just wait some time, then I read it back using this function, then I print it, and if everything works well, we have to get this uh, message on the console. 
So enough words, let's debug the code and to see how it works. Uh, so let me open data console, resume the code. And what I got is a string uh, red is the, the expected result basically. And also we can use um, live expressions. So let me open there. So I'm just going to write it here. And if I open live expression, we, we got the same result. So everything is working well. What I want to do next uh, is to remove these two lines of code. So I remove this part. Okay, so I just read it. So I'm going to terminate. Then I can turn off the microcontroller. So I'm going to turn off the microcontroller. Then I connect it back. Then I resume the code. And if I resume the code, as you see, we get the same string. Even we didn't write anything there. Why? Because we 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 wrote data to the to the flash memory, which is non-volatile, meaning that even uh, the microcontroller is powered off, we still have this data inside. So even so later we can just connect the microcontroller to the power supply and get the data. That's it for this lesson. And I just want to point out that the source code is available on GitHub on Step School Organization. There you can get access to all the source code, to all materials uh, of, of the of the projects that I worked so far. And you can get access uh, by joining um, a community on Patreon or on my website. Another big announcement is that I finished updating Attitude Estimation course. If you're building a, a drone, a balancing robot, or any other robots, attitude estimation is key to achieve stability. So uh, you can, so your robot can hold the stable position and it can do some meaningful tasks. So in this course, we we would cover topics like extended Kalman filter, quaternions, and Euler angles. And also we will learn embedded programming um, so we can um, sample uh, sensors in real time. And also we can um, do a bias removal, uh, re normalization and scaling. So it, it is complete guidance on the attitude estimation course. And you were going to learn a lot. So uh, the link to join this course you can also find in the description below. So thanks a lot for watching, uh, see you soon.